Hello, my name is Paul Hertz. I'm an artist. I've developed a generative system, which I use for producing my drawings, paintings, and prints that are on display at the Kavli Institute. These two-dimensional works reveal the algorithmic aspects of my generative system. The generative system also produces performances, musical compositions, texts, and interactive installations. Uh, it even embraces the creation of fictitious artists who produce other streams of work. Paul Hertz is also a fictitious artist, but fortunately he shares his identity with me so I can talk about him rather freely. The very first work in the generative system was a collage that I created from scrap metal found on the beach in Provincetown in the summer of 1969 while I was studying painting at the Provincetown workshop. Its fundamental motif was that of a window or picture frame, which could be reduced to a square hole in a square. A little experimentation revealed that there were four ways of connecting the interior corners to the exterior corners in such a way as to partition the frame into five basic shapes. I gave each shape and each partition an evocative name. Eventually I called the set of four different partitions the four ignotiles. The four ignotiles could be arranged into a two by two array following another rule. I used each tile once and I enumerated the diagonal lines so that 12 of them would be unique over the array. Tiles in each group could be permutated into 24 different orders. This 12-point solution, or ignoquad, of four tiles allowed me to place rotations and reflections of the tiles into eight different groups. Next, I looked for ways of building 4x4 four four arrays. The Latin square, an n by n array of n elements where no element is repeated in any row or column, gave me a basic rule. Over the winter of 1979 to 1980, while living in Spain, with a few insights and a good deal of brute force, I developed rules for four colorings of the ignoquads. The oldest work on display, Aigua Barrech de Mirais, or Cascade of Mirrors, dates from this time. The coloring rules led to more complex ways of representing the Latin squares, Greco-Latin squares, and other combinatorial rules. I developed other rules for altering the geometry of the tiling patterns I was generating. There were rules for dissolving shapes into one another, and rules for classifying and coloring the resulting shapes. New shapes beyond the initial classification emerged from the boundary dissolving. These included lakes and paths. You can see these in the early work Islas Islands, and in later works like Piazzoniara and Criadero. Other experiments involved the possibility of inflating the tiling patterns, replicating diagonal lines at a larger scale. Diamante and its companion piece that reveals its structure may give you an idea of how this would work. I was doing all this work without benefit of a computer, but certainly not without computation. I created a deck of 32 binary punched cards to help me create compositions. First I did chance operations by flipping coins, but soon I saw other possibilities. The cards used in the performance Ignotus the Mage were originally an algorithmic tool for creating paintings. Instead of flipping coins, I roped my friends into playing the Ignotus game. They wanted something in return, so I told fortunes. Some people took me too seriously, so I devised a dysfunctional fortune teller who could only tell the present. I lay the cards out, and the participant chooses various piles that I pick up. I read the cards, Q1, 
skewed by a system that combines Kandinsky's theory of the picture plane with old-fashioned mumbo-jumbo and cold reading. I collect the patterns and the voices and faces of participants to use in installations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 